Hello there guys and welcome to another one of my reviews. Today we are driving the brand new Honda E. And this is a car that has fascinated me ever since the concept reviewing it was launched. That's because it had a very interesting retro design. Not one that I could say I'm in love with, but one that really brings the past and the future together because this car has a design that was inspired by the first generation Honda Civic and it has a lot of the original Volkswagen Golf in it too, the Golf Mark I. So it looked very interesting in concept form. The concept was dubbed Honda EV Urban um, and it was created to offer a very interesting take on the future. I would call this Retro Boutique. That's how I'd, I'd call this car. Um, so I was very curious to drive it. Unfortunately, when the production version was launched and I found out about the specs, I was a bit disappointed. This is Honda's basically first electric car built on a bespoke platform, bespoke electric platform. And uh, I was hoping that platform underneath would bring a lot more uh, advantages to the mix, um, not just disadvantages. Um, okay, so compared to a normal car, this has a layout that was created from the get-go to offer more space inside. And compared to its traditional rivals, the Honda has more room inside. When I'm talking about the rivals, I'm meaning um, the Mini Cooper SE, electric, and of course the uh, Peugeot E208 or the Opel Corsa E. They're basically the same car. And compared to those cars, which are electric but built on internal combustion engine platforms, this car offers more space uh, inside. It's quite obvious from every angle. Uh, and while on the outside it looks very re uh, retro and very old school, um, with those round headlamps up front, very clear, uh, very simple design on the outside, clear lines and everything, very streamlined everything, the door handles are retracted into the cabin, you have digital side mirrors and so on. So while the exterior might be retro combined with modern day, the interior is all modern. So it's very airy inside, very spacious. You can actually feel how this platform, how this car was built on a bespoke electric platform. You don't have a center console that frees up a lot of space in here. You have these beautiful screens in front of you. There's like five of them. You have two six inch screens on the sides, on the dash, uh, which are basically your rear view mirrors. You have two 12.3 inch screens over here on, in the middle of the dash and one digital instrument cluster that's an eight incher. So um, plenty of screens inside and the whole layout reminds you of a lounge because that's what Honda was going for. Honda said, uh, this is supposed to mimic a lounge. So that's what it does actually. That's why you have all these screens. So they are very customizable except for the uh, rear view mirrors. Um, the instrument cluster shows you all the information you want. And these two screens are very useful and very customizable. Each uh, person up front has his own or her own screen. So the passenger can set up the screen using the shortcuts on the right and the driver the shortcuts on the left. And you can switch between them by pressing this button. Uh, you can browse through a variety of information to be display, displayed. For example, right now I'm using the um, EV uh, menu to show me where the power is going, when the car is recuperating energy, how much range I have, the energy consumption and so on. On the right side, you can choose to use Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, navigation and so on. So you can choose everything you want. You can even double the information for each side. Very interesting. The resolution could have been better and the animations are a bit slow at times, but still good job from Honda because their interiors were kind of lackluster lately. So I like this setup. You have also a personal assistant, which you can give vocal commands to. It doesn't work perfectly, but it's a start. You can also use your phone to lock and unlock the car and basically use your phone as a key. You can also get an app in certain markets, not every market, that allows you to control certain things on the car, just like you would get on basically any modern day electric model today. So 
plenty of technology inside. I don't know how this will age though. Uh, screens don't have a good reputation when it comes to aging, but it's interesting. You also get a 230 volt um, power socket over here, which can deliver up to 1500 watts. That's interesting. It's not a novelty. Other cars have been offering it as well for years, but it's interesting that you have this possibility and you also have an HDMI connector uh, down low. In terms of driving though, this car is quite awesome. That's because it is a uh, rear engine, rear wheel drive car. The motor, depending on the market you're in, can have either 136 horsepower or 153 horsepower. Uh, the one we're driving is the 154 horsepower. Uh, the Newton is, the, uh, the, the um, torque is the same uh, regardless of the version. So you have 350 Newton meters of torque. Uh, and that's of course available from uh, really down low from zero RPM as we used to say in, uh, in the business. So um, the throttle response is sharp and the fact that you have the engine and the power sent to the rear axle, uh, that means you uh, can drift this car. As a matter of fact, it's very fun to drive. The steering doesn't offer a lot of input, a lot of feedback, but and the front axle feels rather light, but the car is nice to drive and it comes as standard with Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires, which means Honda didn't really value range as much as they wanted you to have fun in this car. And since they are saying it out loud and very proud that this is a car meant to be driven ex almost exclusively around town, their uh, solution does make sense because you don't need a lot of range anyway if you're only going to use this car around town. Uh, speaking of which, the battery measures 35.5 kilowatt hours in total, no matter what kind of model you get, but you can only use up to 28 kilowatt hours of that battery. The remaining seven kilowatts will be a buffer to protect the battery on, uh, on long term. And um, that brings us to the range issue, uh, which is the biggest issue this car has. Um, it's rated for 124 miles of range or 200 kilometers of range, uh, but that's in almost perfect conditions. Now, during my time with the car, uh, the weather was pretty bad. Um, really cold temperatures, around four to five degrees Celsius and even lower. Um, and the average fuel consumption, fuel consumption, <laughs> the average energy consumption was around 20 kilowatts per 100 kilometers covered, kilowatts hour for you know, 100 kilometers covered. That means a range of about 100 to 120, 125 um, kilometers. That will be 60 to 75 miles of range. Uh, but then again, this is a very cold uh, time of the year and this should be considered a worst case scenario. Um, to be honest, this is like the worst you can get. And uh, you should be aware of that though. If you live in colder climate areas, uh, you should be aware that this car will have issues with colder temperatures. Uh, but then again, if you're only going to use it around town, I think it should be enough. I mean, depending on how long your commute is, if you have a commute, if you're going to buy this car, uh, you're working from home and you're only going to use it to go shopping, I think that's going to be enough. The fact that it has a McPherson setup up front and in the back for the suspension uh, means this car is very comfortable. It's actually the most comfortable out of the three choices in this range. Very, very well damped too. And I really can't complain about the suspension. Whereas on the Mini Cooper SE uh, electric, it's a rather stiff setup. And the same can be said about the uh, Peugeot E208 or the Corsa uh, E, which are basically the same car. But those cars have longer ranges than this car. So it will depend on what you're looking for. At the same time, this car has more room in the back, more room inside overall, because it's built on a bespoke platform. So you have more room inside the Honda E compared to the Mini Cooper Electric or the uh, Peugeot E208. So, you know, you got to make up your mind and see what you're really looking for from a car. And then you can actually go out and buy one. Overall, I like the car. I like it's really fun to drive. Uh, I think it's the most fun to drive uh, between these three cars. Uh, but the range is 
I, I would have preferred less gimmicks inside, like the wallpaper for the screens or the you have an aquarium you can you can set up on these screens and so on. And I would have preferred Honda invest more in the battery and the range of this car. I understand it's meant for the city, but still, you still get some range anxiety when you see 60 kilometers of range in a, in the dash. That said, this has been my review of the Honda E. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, and of course, subscribe to keep this channel alive. And uh, until next time, take care of yourselves. Ciao.